Surprisingly, WWE Backlash 2022 was actually a good pay-per-view. Excuse me, premium live event. Classic WWE. If the pay-per-view smells like crap, it's probably not crap. For the most part, we got great wrestling. That was the highlight of the show. Yes, we got a couple of cool wrestling moments, but for the most part, it was all about the matches. Overall, I did enjoy the pay-per-view, but in my opinion, it kind of lacked importance, and that's mostly because Roman Reigns did not defend the WWE Universal Championship. Excuse me, WWE Undisputed World Heavyweight Universal Championship. Something along those lines. He did make sure to remind everyone he's a champion though. And even that match was actually amazing. I just feel like it didn't do anything for the story. Nothing was on the line. It took me a while to care about the match. I don't know, most wrestling fans weren't actually excited about this pay-per-view. Even myself, I didn't expect anything from it. I even felt it personally. My predictions video was one of the worst performing videos in a while. Oh, but that's just because you suck the great one. You ain't even simping for Shasha. Yes, that's kinda true. Like the video though. But predictions videos always do pretty well and that mostly depends on whether people are excited about the pay-per-view or not. And I felt it. People don't care. The WWE Backlash Premium Live Event kicked off with Cody Rhodes vs Seth Rollins. Bold move, I feel like this could have been the main event. As much as it was obvious that this is going to be a great match because we already seen it, it still took me by surprise. I would go as far as saying that this match was actually even better than the Wrestlemania match. The difference is, the Wrestlemania match had that shock factor. In terms of the match quality, this was a better wrestling match. I also like the attention to detail. Seth Rollins was wearing his Wrestlemania attire, basically saying that this is still my Wrestlemania moment and you're not gonna steal my spotlight. I'm taking it back. At least that's what I got from this. I could be wrong. We got many in interesting reversals, many interesting move variations, many near falls and uh, you know it's one of these matches where you watch and you can tell these guys are trying to steal the show. To me it felt like one of these matches where after the match wrestlers go backstage and hug because it was that damn good. Perhaps he kiss on each cheek. All in all, I loved it. Meltzer is definitely half chubbed. At the end of the match, Cody was looking for the crossroads. Rollins got out. Then Cody went for the Verdi Brilla. Verdi Breaker. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Verdi. Word. Blah blah. Word to break. This move right here. He went for this move right here, but. Seth Rollins got out. We saw a roll up, Cody reversed it, and pinned Seth Rollins. Cody takes the W, Seth Rollins is devastated, shocked, sad, but he got what was coming for him. He was mocking Dusty Rhodes during the match, and you don't do that. So yeah, Cody won the match again, it's 2-0 right now. I don't know, some people will say that Seth Rollins lost some credibility, I don't really think so. I think Cody needed the W, he just came back to the WWE, and like I've said, they need to build Cody for Roman Reigns. They need to build Cody Rhodes so much that we get one of these Paul Heyman faces when he eventually challenges Roman Reigns. And most importantly, it was a roll-up. You know, I feel like... In this match, we saw a story of equal men, but Cody just outsmarted Seth Rollins. I think he also pulled his tights, so he was cheating. If you're a female, don't click off the video just yet, because then we saw Bobby Lashley. He was facing Omas, and look, I know that Omas is very limited, but honestly... I didn't hate the match. This was by far, like, by far the best Omas singles match we've seen. The man is slowly improving, and this was so much better than the WrestleMania 38 match. WWE know that Omas is very limited, so let's just do some crazy ass shit like this. And let's have Bobby Lashley jumping around trying to beat Omas unsuccessfully though. MVP got involved and Omas took the W. Omas wins the match. I'm not gonna act like it was a great wrestling match, but considering it's Omas was very limited and understandably so, the man is big, you know, it's different. Considering it's Omas, the match was good. Then it was time for Edge versus AJ Styles. Man, I love this entrance. And this was kind of a similar match we saw at WrestleMania. I absolutely loved Edge's attire. Uh, honestly, it's growing on me. You know, at first I wasn't a big fan of this gimmick, but 
it is growing on me, especially considering the fact he's going to help out a lot of young talent. I personally enjoyed the match, and I know that some people still don't get Edge's matches. It's all about the storytelling, but in this one, it's kind of a mixture of both, if that makes any sense. It's hard to explain. What I'm trying to say is we did see quite a few interesting spots. It's always fascinating to me that these guys are like, what, 45 years old or something along those lines? Like, I personally know people that age who can barely run. I know it's kind of out of topic, but it's always fascinating to me. Ric Flair is still trying. He's still wrestling. He's doing stuff. Ric Flair, who at this point looks like a foot, no disrespect, he's old, it, it, it will happen to all of us. We saw Damien Priest distracting AJ Styles, but we saw Finn Balor for the save. But then we saw a mystery wrestler, who could that be? The mask and all was really unnecessary, it was really obvious that it was Rare Ripley, like completely obvious. So she grabs AJ Styles by his hand and hurt his armpit. If you want professional wrestling reviews, you came to the right place. Then we saw a cross faced by Edge and AJ Styles passed out. Edge takes the W. Oh my god, this is Ray Ripley! Yeah, Mark. It, it was really shocking. I like that. I honestly do. I hope that we are going to see more members, honestly, but I think we already talked about that. Like, we already predict that Rhea Ripley is going to join this faction. It's great. It's different. I like that we have a female in the faction, and now she looks legit like she can challenge for the championship again. Hopefully, she will regain her credibility. By the way, she has black hair. I forgot to mention that. Not that it matters, but... She didn't only just put a black eyeliner to join this emo faction. Mama didn't buy me Robux and now my hair is black! It was shocking how much WWE actually ruined Rhea Ripley, so hopefully now she can go back to the main event. Then we saw the I Quit match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Charlotte Flair vs. Ronda Rousey, my least favorite rivalry this year, probably major rivalry. This match though... It delivered. I feel like WWE made a big mistake by not making Becky Lynch the first Ronda Rousey's opponent. It's like we all know Charlotte is good, but she's been doing the same thing for years and years and years now, and everything she's involved in right now is just kinda the same. It's really hard to get invested, but this match, like I've said, it was good, it was very physical, it was kind of a reminder that yes, Ronda Rousey is pretty good, and she's a very talented performer. This being an I Quit match kind of made it predictable, maybe not in a bad way, but we all knew that Ronda Rousey is not gonna say the words, especially since she's Ronda Rousey, and she's a babyface. Charlotte Flair says... Happy Mother's Day before she tried to make Ronda quit. Ronda takes advantage. Charlotte Flair had no choice but to say I quit. Ronda Rousey is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. Feelings got hurt. I mean, finally. Finally something new. And I wonder who's gonna be the next Ronda Rousey's challenger. Obviously, we are probably going to get a rematch. Even though after an I quit match... I don't think that's necessary, like that's the ideal scenario, Charlotte Flair takes a break because that would be really beneficial for us and for her and comes back with some kind of a new gimmick, not necessarily a new gimmick but something new and I'm glad we have a new SmackDown Women's Champion, I'm ready for something new so um, I'm happy with the result, I'm happy with the match. This was good. Then we saw Madcap Moss versus Happy Corbin. The highlight right here was commentary. Pat McAfee just kind of making fun of Corbin. Everything else, that was just your SmackDown match. Nothing really special right here. Exactly what you would expect from this, honestly. Madcap Moss took the W, so at least that's good. I don't know. This was the weakest part of the show. It wasn't anything, like, unbelievably bad, but it was just there. And then it was time for the main event, the Bloodline versus RK Bro and Drew McIntyre. So like I've said, it was really hard for me to get excited at first because nothing is really on the line. Any result is 
unimportant like any outcome doesn't change a damn thing but they still found a way to make me at least care about the match or the action that we're seeing because i like the amount of rkos we've seen i like the amount of crazy ass rkos we've seen so a super kick party claymores out of nowhere so this was a fun match and it basically reminds me of uh some of the greatest survivor series matches we've seen obviously this match is different it's not an elimination match but you know if this was a survivor series match i wouldn't actually complain i guess the thought process right here was nothing is on the line at least let's have a memorable match i did not expect that finish though we saw an rko from riddle of the top rope spear from reigns and the bloodline won the match it's okay riddle you're stupid you're stupid, but that's okay. The bloodline stands tall. It's not that it matters, but if I was booking this match, I feel like Drew McIntyre needed to pin Roman Reigns. This way, Drew McIntyre can say, I pinned you and now I deserve the title shot. I mean, that's the rivalry we are getting. So I feel like that was the only interesting outcome. Drew McIntyre pinning Roman Reigns and even that didn't happen. Roman pinned Riddle. In a way, the, the weakest link, right? What I mean by that, Riddle eating the pin doesn't really do anything. But like I've said, the match itself was really, really good. So for the most part, I believe this was a very enjoyable pay-per-view. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited about Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns? Do you still think WWE are going to unify the WWE Tag Team Championships? A lot of questions. Thank you for watching the video. The Great One. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.